Hello and welcome to another edition of Extra Connections Race Talk here on JLJ Media. Who am I? I'm the JLJ of JLJ Media, James Lodge Jr., of course. And, you know, this is our mini series within our series, Extra Connections, which you can find on Facebook, of course. But we've been doing talks on race for the last about three or four years now at this point. It's a subsection that people seem to love. And, and this new season of this show, we're doing things from black baseball to the city of Baltimore um to interracial relationships and in this one folks the soap opera yes that genre that's still here almost 95 years old is still here and basically everything's a soap opera at this point but the point is to my actual soap operas when they call themselves soap operas the daytime soaps and i have someone with me where it's also national library week as we're recording this and he works at a library uh, and he's been on one of my shows before I'm happy to have him back. He's a fellow junior. Help me welcome Donald Peebles Jr. Hi, how are you? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. It's 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 good to be back here, James. And thank you for this opportunity once again. My pleasure. So, folks, know I read my lists. I do. I've been doing this forever. Um, you may see some commonalities. It may not. Uh, but I'm gonna read the list, and then we're gonna go from there. So, folks, this list is a little longer than my usual. Um, but we get through. I will get through. Get through it fast. So, Donald Peebles, everybody else, you guys ready? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> you might get the pattern as I'm reading this. Okay, let me get myself together, folks. <clears throat> um, whew, yes. Okay. Generations, the have and have nots, passions, one life to live, all my children, the young and the restless. Tomorrow, Tooney. Lauren B. Martin, Anna Costia, Anthony Anderson, Tony Moore, my chocolate twin, Rock TV, Albert Bostic, GH Sunday Shift, Sabrina Faith, Carla Renata, Ladine Harvey, DC Soap Sanctuary, Jamie Giddens, Darrell Anthony, Michelle Van Jean, Lynn Martin, Lauren St. Victor, Susan Banks, Brad Clarence Sanders. Victoria Rowell, Tiny Lee Williams, the late, great Christoph St. John. Shamar Moore, the late, great Ellen Holly. My girl, Jonelle Allen, James Reynolds, Oba Babatunde, Darnell Williams, Debbie Morgan, Lamone Archie, Sal Stowers. Jack A. Sharon Leal, Vivica A. Fox, Morgan Freeman. Tatiana Ali, Monty Sharp, Henry Simmons, Carla Mosley, Tay Diggs, Lauren Hill, Tashina Arnold. Nia Long, Ruby D, Mario Van Peebles, Timothy, J, Timothy D. Stickney, me. Sean Blakemore, my man, Donnell Turner. Renee Watson, Todd Below, Sydney Michaela, Tabiana Ali, Vanessa Antoine, Brianna Nicole Henry, Vanessa Bell Calloway, Cicely Tyson, Tika Sumter, Rome Flynn, Rain Edwards, Nia Sue. Renee Elise Goldsberry, Al Freeman Jr., Rex Ingram, Michelle Morgan, Brittany Sarpy, Brighton James. My buddy Aaron D. Spears. Terrell Tilford, Renee Jones, Crystal Khalil, Angel Conwell, Tosha Story, Aloma Wright, Nathan Owens. The wonderful Tanya Boyd, Terrell Ransom Jr., Joseph C. Phillips, and the late, great Rosalind Cash. My friend, Tanya Pinkins, Lynn Moody, Kit Masters King, the late, great Diane Carroll. Richard Lawson, Troy Bay Bayer, the late Larry Riley. Pat Colbert, who played Dora May on Dallas. Tina Andrews, Marilyn McCoo, Vanessa Williams, the first interracial couple on GH, Todd Davis and Bianca Ferguson. Phil Lewis, Stephanie E. Williams, Tanisha Harper, Heath Hamilton Cobb, Nichelle Nichols, Nathan Purdy, and my friend, the late Sonia Eddy. That's my list. 
I believe in tradition. Um, some cultures, you speak out their names mm -hmm. um, and recognition. As I always ask my co-hosts on the show, when you hear that list, what are your initial thoughts? Richness, uh, uh, rich um, soap opera, rich history, a uh, rich history in a uh, blackness in soap opera industry, um, daytime, prime time, syndication, cable, um, digital, all of it, all of the mediums. Um, all of these great actors um, on our screens for six, six to seven decades. It, 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 I, and it's like, when you were reading that list off, I was like, oh my goodness. Um, because of the fact that we are passionate about our brothers and sisters in this genre, in this history, and the fact that I am um, writing a book on this history. So when you were reading the names off, I was like, oh my Thanks, goodness. So. Like, I know my people. I know. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, it's great. It's phenomenal. Um, and the, um, what they did and what they are doing and how it's going to still go on, um, going, going into our 94th, 95th year of this genre. It's like, and when I see these conversations on Twitter and Facebook going on, I'm like, really, are we going there about race and what's, not what's being seen and what's not being seen. But though, but I love the fact that you read those names to give people the fact that these people um, have paved the way and are paving the way for future Black actors, not, not even just actors, writers, creatives, producers, directors. You know, we, we haven't really have enriched this genre from the beginning. Um, one of the things I want to I want to uh, let people know, and that's not everybody. There's more. No. Oh, there's oh, more yeah. in this genre. I I I just got to read forever. But oh, yeah. however, comma, this list is still less than the white list. If I were to read a white list of everybody on soaps, it would go mm -hmm. on for days. Yeah. This one maybe maybe another hour, but the rest would be for days, and that's the problem yeah. I think we're talking about today. This is this race yeah. talk. Um, and I think what's interesting is I, I want to start with you are writing a book and you interviewed me for your book. So thank you. I remember that. Your research. Um, when I mentioned Ellen Holly, Al Freeman Jr., when I mentioned, I'll make, sure, I'll make sure I get everybody's names correct in this one. When I mentioned them, when I mentioned, what should I say that? Todd Davis or Bianca Ferguson. Mm -hmm. But or, or Phil Lewis and Stephanie William, E. Williams. When I mentioned Keith Hamilton Cobb or or Shamar Moore or Juice, mm -hmm. I mean, all of them. These are people who early on, I mentioned Darnell Williams, Debbie Morgan, first black super couple. Mention these folks. Um I hope you understand, these folks were really alone on their soaps. Um, and in the soap world. And you know, Ellen Holly just passed away recently. So, yeah, I was, and if I, and she's, the, she's the interview that got away from me. I've always wanted to interview her. I thought I had time and it didn't, you know, we don't always have time. So if like, people ask me, is there any of you ever wanted to have? And I thought she was one I've always wanted to sit down with and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I didn't get that. There's some, uh, there's some good interviews out there right now. Uh, you can check them. I think the the Academy or some has a, a whole se a whole series of interviews. And her book was really good too. Um, when I say Ellen Holly, what it what, what comes to mind for you? Oh my goodness, Ellen Holly, um, the first black major daytime star, um, first black storyline on daytime, um, legendary, um, le queen queen mother. Um, I interviewed her when I did my thesis for, um, on the same topic. I interviewed her. Yeah. I was nervous. Oh, I was. <laughs> I was nervous because it was like, I was like, um, it, I got to interview her. If I interview her, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, the thing about it, I wrote the thesis as if I was writing a book. I mean, I was very naive. I just wanted to get 
a lot of things that I could get in. I mean, I, that was practice for, for this. Ellen Holly, um, phenomenal. Um, I I I get emotional when I talk about her, um, Ellen, because Ellen, Ellen was that woman, her book, please, people, read her book, One Life, the yes. autobiography of an African-American actress. Ooh. That book, yes, she agree. went in. I'm um, talking about her family history. She's related to black luminaries in her own family. Yes. I mean, she has a rich um, yes. genealogy. I agree. Um, and 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 her um, her experiences in the black the in the theater, the black theater, and eventually her role on Why Not to Live. Um, and what was crazy about um, um, not crazy, but what was interesting about um, her character Carla. As many of people know, people thought Carla Carla was presented as a Italian American actress who um, came to Landview Hospital. Yes. Um, the One Up to Live History book by Gary Warner, and no disrespect to him, he wrote as if she had cirrhosis. No, she did not have cirrhosis. She had um, mental mental health issues, um, and uh, it just manifested in 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 our body. A black woman passing for white, yeah, that's gonna that's a lot of psychological um, damage there because you're denying a lot of you, who you were and are. So of course you're you're you're, you're gonna go through stuff. So she was at that hospital. Interestingly, um, Sadie Gray, played by the late great Lillian Heyman, um, was the head of the housekeeping services at Landview. And Lillian Heyman um, was a Tony Award winning actress from Hallelujah Baby. Yep. And she lived out here in um, St. Albans. Um, Queens, because St. Albans is a black historic um, um, town out here yeah. in Queens. They call that section Adelaide Park. Right. Mm, you know you know how that is. Um, yeah. when, they put landmarks, they want to rename it to distinguish. My old area of like Brooklyn is now Kensington. And I'm like, it wasn't Kensington. Yeah. And now King, right. Yeah. 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 Right. And Sadie was at the hospital. And um, but Carla was presenting herself as white. But it was just that moment in which um it happened on the Friday. I read it in the book, in which um Sadie was coming home because she lived right next to Anna Wallach, Larry, Larry, um, Larry, Larry Wallach's sister. Um, who was played first by Doris Ballack. Um, Doris Ballack, she was the first Gloria on the Golden Girls. Yeah. But for those who were in the Golden Girls, um, Sadie was coming home and this Carla came up in the apartment building and when, um, and I, I think it was Sadie who first saw her and acknowledged her like, Clara? Right. That was on a Friday. Yeah. And <laughs> people were, it was a mind fuck. It was a mind fuck to the point that a Texas affiliate of ABC canceled the show because yeah. Carla was kissing up on Dr. Price trainer, um, played by Peter DeAnda, yep. um, uh, an original cast member, kissing him because people were thinking, oh, this white woman kissing this black man. And then engaged to Dr. Jim Craig, Kathy Craig's daddy. And it, it 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 was it was it was it, at that time so surreal, um, because Agnes Nixon used this storyline from the experiences of Earth the Kid, and then um Ellen wrote an article for the New York Times, uh, I believe how black you got to be she because did. Ellen was having issues um being cast in theater and on television because she was so light to the point that. She couldn't be cast easily as a black person, and of course, she couldn't be cast as a white person. You know, so it, it so she went through all of that. So Agnes Nixon um, capitalized on that. Let's just call it as as it is. No yeah. disrespect to Agnes, but oh. you got to understand this is a business. It's a business, and um, at that time, nineteen sixty eight, that was a powerful year for blacks on television, um, daytime and prime time, due to to the uh, to the riots and the current commission. So these black people and then these activist groups like Tor fighting to get black people on commercials and television, they had to convince Procter and Gamble to put black people on the commercials and on the soaps. Yeah. 
Right on. Oh yeah, right on. Yes. So yeah. that was so El Ellen Holly, she's a hero. You know, the fact that she wrote about she told it all. She went and told it all. Like, okay, there was just some white actors. They weren't feeling my essence, my presence. There was that, that and I'm just gonna say she named him in a way, Paul Rouch, the issue she had with Paul Rouch, and yep. also with um off the burn guard. Yeah, that was him. She renamed him in the book. He played her, he played Carla's second husband, Dr. Jack Scott. And there were a lot of behind the scenes stuff with them. And they were on the cover of Ebony Magazine. And she discussed all of that. But Ellen, when she died, I, I mean, I knew she was up there in the age, but when she died, I I I I couldn't I couldn't take it because I mean I knew that she was up there. Um, but I was happy that I was able to inter interview her. I wanted to interview her for the thesis. For a book, yeah. but I just didn't get the time like 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 with you. Yeah. But Ellen, uh, Ellen was that woman. Well, you got to talk and to I her. her. You got to talk to her, so I, I I'm yeah. jealous completely in a good way. In a good uh -huh. way. Um, no, she so when Alan Locker did a tribute to her, I thought it was very well done. I thought it was good. Yeah. It's a shame that a white person did a tribute to her. I mean, I was I was dude, this is right. This is true race talk. Um, I had thought of it first, and I mean, I was coming up with something, but he did it. He beat me to it. I had done already. He used, he actually used my show because I did a show on her before she died. I mean, I recognize, you know, I've been recognizing black folks for a while. Uh, I have a show called the. So folks don't know this. I have a show called the Wife to Life, Wife to Live After Show. Yes, and audio, yes. and I did the importance of Ellen Holly. I mean, I just, I, I had, and so, and Alan asked me, can he listen to it and. And because I sent him to the article, he listened to my show, and so he, he gave me acknowledgement that I did kind of help clue him in a little bit more about her. Because um, I did, I congratulated him. I said, I know, I said, I nobody else did anything for her, which is a shame. Um, and I thought, and I said, I was going to do something, but I couldn't get there faster. You got there faster than me, and he did it. And I, I, I watched it, and I support. So I'm, so I'm saying, check out Alan Locker's. He talked to some really important people there around that time, and Black folks, and they have a really frank discussion about her and the show so Alan like locker room check it out i want to give a shout out to that um to me it doesn't matter it gets the story out there and you just sharing that part and you know i know the story people don't know this it's again for you at home you know your soap fam she is just as important as susan lucci she's such as important as erica slaveback she's just as important as jr ewing she's just as important like there are mm -hmm. people in this business that and when you were the first and you know this donald you don't always get the glory at first. You're the first, right. you're breaking it down. Right. You get a little forgotten sometimes. And then the other ones come out a little more, but there would be no Debbie Morgan. There would be no Renee Jones. There would be no, I mean, none of, none of, there have been no, I mean, and again, Al Freeman Jr., same thing. There are so many folks that would, he's the first actor to win, of color to win lead actor in a drama series. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if it wasn't for him, there'd be no A. Martinez. There'd be no James Reynolds. There'd be no Chris Thompson. Like there's, these are these two people I really want. I I admire them both so much because I've read both their stories, and I really want people to just kind of remember those names. Just remember those names. Remember nothing else. Remember Ellen Holly and Al Freeman Jr. Look them up um, because they because as we talk about stuff more stuff today, you'll see why we're mentioning them because it does relate to the state of soaps today. But I just want to make sure we go in our past a little bit first, and then I want to talk. And I want to talk a little bit about about. Uh, Darnell Williams, Debbie Morgan, Angie and Jesse, and how I was alive. So I remember all that. I remember how yeah. big they were. Um, yeah. I remember Jesse died, and it was like heart breaking. Yeah. I mean, I remember that whole yeah. scene in the hospital. But Angie and Jesse, they were so, um, and everybody around them, because we had, we had Tad, we had Jenny, we had mm -hmm. it, it was that whole section. Uh, what are your thoughts on what do you think about, what do you think about the, that coupling? What do you think about that? Oh my goodness, um, because I started watching on my children with my grandmother Sally. Oh my, I'm thinking about my grandmother right now. I don't want to cry on here. My grandmother and my aunt Rogina were the first ones to introduce me to soaps. So I gotta give my debt to grandma and to my aunt Rogina. We I call her Tootsie Row. Um Tootsie Row was the first one in my family um to go to um graduate from high school and college and grad school. So she was that point of reference for me. Um, she influenced me because I did, I was nonverbal until the age of five. Um, oh. so my aunt exposed me. Yeah. Um, grandfather told me, um, if I couldn't speak, 
proper English, don't talk. So you 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 know, children, yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandfather went there, yeah. Um, yeah. my grandfather um had his own issues and uh, just going through therapy and just really realizing that um he, he was a man from Jim Crow, Alabama, in the service. He had he 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 had some um dysfunctional family background of right. his own. So when it came to family and also, but I think, but what it was with him, um, I think he knew the smarter that I got, my grandmother asked me certain questions and he didn't want me to tell my grandmother what he was doing um, outside of the home. Well, um, anyway, I'm just gonna leave it anyway, at that. That's a, like, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. But um, <laughs> Jesse and Angie, um, they were two of my favorite characters at that time um, because I, I loved them. Cliff and Dina. Palmer and Daisy, um, Erica Kane, of course, Opal, Opal Gardner, um, Phoebe Wallingford, all of those people. Oh, and um, and all of those other colorful people from Pine Valley. Um, but what it, I, I resonated with them because Darnell resembled, reminded me of my father. Um, my father was born a year after Darnell, 1959. So I, he was a young father when I was born. Um, he was a teenager when I was born. So he reminded me of him, not in his mannerisms and some of his um his um his look. So I quickly resonated with um with um with Jesse. They were very similar, very street. So that 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 <laughs> that resonated with me quickly. Um and um Angie. Oh, I love Debbie's dimples. Dips, the, um, dimples. dimples. <laughs> um they were just the they were just the cutest couple and it it was like it was like what it's like some things were sketchy um um because as a little kid you don't understand the dynamics when you're watching so it's just something your grandmother or your mother or your great grandmother or your aunt watching these shows so you're just watching along with them but um I just I wasn't watching them as much in 84 because I was seven years old in school but um they were going through issues with um Yvonne Caldwell and Jesse's brother Eugene, um, Tom Wright, the same actor who played the um, executive who tried, who sexually harassed Whitley on a different world, Tom Wright. He was also on Search for Tomorrow. Um, and I just, you know, just looking at them, I'm just like, okay, they, they, I could tell from a little kid they weren't nice people. They were doing something, but I will never forget. When Angie caught Jesse in bed with Yvonne, I was like, I was like, and it it looked raunchy at that time because a little kid watching, I'm like, what? Yeah. What is that? You know, and and then a Angie, um, you know, a Angie, Angie broke up with him and go going through her marital um stuff. And then I also remember um, when Angie became my um, she became a doctor, and she was being sexually harassed. Um, by Dr. John Boyd, um, David Canary's real life brother. Um, yeah, and um, and how she was able to to um, to win. She was able to prove that she was sexually harassed, and did and then she almost went there with Dr. Jeff Martin. A lot of people forgot that when Je Jeffrey Byron, um play Jeff. He, Annalise, real life son people. Annalise L Lila from General Hospital, her real life son, Jeffrey Byron, um, who had who had just did um wanted to live as Richard Abbott, Vicky and Tina's cousin, who yeah. got with Tina. I mean, that's a whole that's a whole nother discussion there. But um it, you, you could tell they were about to do something, but um of course it didn't happen. So Jesse and Angie got back together, were raising Frankie, and they they were just a part of the canvas, you know. And that's what I like. Even though, even though at first we know that they were they were the best friends of Greg and Jenny. We know that, you know, we know that reality too. But it seemed like like so after Greg and Jenny, um, well, after Jenny died and Greg Greg left town, then the action finally came to Jesse and and Angie. Um yeah, Jesse and Angie. And when he died in 88, I was mad at Darnell Williams because I'm like, why are you going to leave all my children to do a cop show that didn't even last? I was mad at him for that. But I understand now people feel they, they got to do what they have to do. So far for jobs and he had to do what he had to do. And just the whole, um, when a Angie, Angie got with Cliff, 
<laughs> oh, I, my grandmother, my grandmother was was telling me, "Oh, you know Jesse? Oh, uh, you know Angie going up the cliff?" I was like, "What?" I asked, it was I, one episode. I got to ask Peter Bergman about that, so yes, yeah, so I interviewed him. That was like. I didn't want them to be together, not because of the interracial thing, but because I knew he was going to go back to Nina eventually. Um, it was it was innovative at that time. I mean, and it made sense because they were doctors, they were colleagues. It made sense. They knew each other for a long time, so it made sense. But I, what I found funny about that, Paul McCartland, who couldn't stand um, Cliff for the whole 10 years, he had a heart attack. I was like, no, he didn't have a heart attack. Uh, his former son-in-law engaged to this black doctor. He had a heart attack. And when Nina came back to Pine Valley and Cliff and Nina um, remarried for the fourth time, Palmer gave them their blessing. I was like, wow. So I want to jump in really quick. There's, there's a couple of things I wanted to say. But one thing is, folks, I did an interview with Peter Bergman on my Wide Army Spotlight, and I got to ask him about that. And he said they wanted to go the distance. It was the the fan, the viewers, not the fans. The viewers were like, no. And he said what you said. It made sense because they're two nice. They're two nice people. They're doctors. Why not? Anybody else would fall. And that's the only reason why Homegirl was brought back to take them off the show. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen. He wouldn't be Jack Abbott on. You know, I mean, that's right. a whole thing. But you know, it's, it's, I right. mean, Destiny's Destiny, but. It was racism. He admitted it. It was racism. Yeah. It was racism. Yeah. There was no reason why. Like you said, there are two nice people. Like, there's no reason not. Why not? I mean, it was fine. So, but I want to say for me, because I'm a little older than you are. <clears throat> I was a teenager when they were teenagers. And so for me, it was a true peer-to-peer -peer appreciation. Because I was watching. They looked like my friends. And I could, I could, you know. And, and what was great, too, was that. The fans, the viewers, it's getting a little windy here in LA. The fans and the viewers accepted Jesse and Jenny's friendship. That was a rarity too, a black man, a white girl. And there was no, yeah. there was no romance there. There was no romance there. They were friends. When they, when they, when they, when they went on the run, that famous one on the run. But they people accepted that. They part they wanted that whole thing. And you're right. Once poor Jenny got this on the ski on the ski jet, um, gets blown up. Um then they said, you know, here we got these two great characters, like Angie and and they 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 had chemistry. She was the she was the girl on the other side of the tracks that was the mm -hmm. higher end. He was the boy from the streets, but neither was steeped. And I don't know how you feel. I feel like neither was steeped in super stereotype. Thank God, it was just kind of like right. It was very much implied because remember his her dad didn't like him because he was in the wrong. Like, it was like it wasn't. It was like it was like a regular family. They were black. Um. You know, it's just, like, just it just kind of it works. So I don't know. I just I just that's why just my rebuttal. To, I I love your stuff you're saying. I'm like that's just as a person who was actually their age. I was kind of like it was nice to see myself reflected on screen. People ask why is that important? It is. It just is. I mean, it just it's nice to see someone go. Oh, I can relate. I can relate to them and my friends. And you talk about it, and um, we watched it in the summertime. And you know, that's when they had the youthful stories. Always in the summer back in the day. I miss those days. Um, and so for me, you were a kid watching it. I was a person actually their age watching it. And that was, and it was very cool to see that. And then going into the, like you said, I got to, I got to ask Peter Bergman about that. And he was frank about it. He was like, it was racism. It was like, it wasn't there. They actually just loved, they loved working together. They were colleagues. It may, actually made sense in the story. It wasn't anything outrageous, but folks weren't ready for that. Okay, so I want to move forward a little forward. I mean, we can talk for hours about all this kind of stuff. I so again, when I put some respect on their names, have that out as we're talking. Because again, all related to what we're about to talk about. So Donald Peoples Jr., I've been watching you online, um, and I have seen that you have been verbally, vocally out there leading the charge um, on your feelings about the soaps, um, and in some cases, many cases, racial aspects of it. Um, as you know, and others and others who are longtime fans of me, I've always talked about race and colorism and sexism. And I I love my black women. I've talked about that. And I've talked about the color stuff for years. Now, after I was tarred and feathered out of Twitter a few years ago, 
I stop doing it. I kind of just, I just, I don't, I, I kind of go on there and watch somebody else doing it. Like I said, I was watching you because I just, it was just, after a while, I get too much for me. I still speak freely on my shows and do all this stuff. Yeah. But I just, I was like, I'll let someone else take it because it's, it's, it's interesting on the online. As we will know, it wasn't that you guys scared me off for sure. I just, I was just kind of like, I just, for me, after a while, I was saying it wasn't fun anymore. Um, but I still press for equality and equity and, and soaps. Um, but watching you, I was like, wow, I, cause I've been here for a few years now. And I feel like you've ramped up, but not just you, a lot of people have ramped up. And I, and I said this on my show the other day on daytime today, I think you commented too on it. Um, people seem to be tired. So Donald Peoples Jr. Is that in, in your assessment? Am I correct? Are people just get, are black folks getting tired of what they're just getting? Yes, I am going to say black people are tired of what we have been getting on um, four of the soaps. Um, well, well, days are lives up to a point, but um, the CBS soaps, the Young and the Restless, I, 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 I have a lot of issues with the Young and the Restless as of late um, because it was a show where um, Bill Bell, did invest in his African American characters. Um, from eight, 1982, let's be real, from 82, with the introduction of Mamie and Captain Frank Lewis, um, the late great Marguerite Ray and Brock Fetus. I'm but the, the early the early characterizations were problematic um because we came through the 1980s was just such a Racial time in America, let, let's be real, under Re Reagan, to Ronald Reagan, a lot of racist policies were going on. And um, television is a reflection of real life, um, the political climate. When there's a certain political climate, you're going to see it reflected in entertainment. Um, yes, we had um, Tyrone Jackson, um, Phil Morris. Amy Lewis, Stephanie E. Williams, um, um, Nathan Hastings, aka Kong. <laughs> oh God, played by Nathan Perdy, and then um, Jazz Jackson, um, John St. Elwood. Yeah, the the butcher, and then um, let's not forget, um, Faye Hauser, Selena Wiley. People forget about her. I'm not gonna forget about any of those people, but the characterizations were what they were because of the reflections of the times. I was talking to Guy Davis, I was in Ruby's son. I interviewed him um, a month ago and just telling him during the eighties, black men were all streetwise on these soaps. The young, the younger leading men um, were all from the street. The daddies were very middle-class, Duffy and some of the black middle class fathers, they had their dirt on on the side. They were doing corruption and all and and all that stuff. So those are times were very problematic. But Bill Bell saw what was going on on generations, and I'm and I'm putting it out there because Sally Sussman Marina was his protege. So of course he was looking to see what Sally was doing over there with the Marshalls and the Jacksons and the other black. Um, um, characters. Generations was the, was that first so to have a Black poor family from the beginning um, alongside a white family. Because um, the soaps that we grew up watching, Blacks came on later on. But Generations, first daytime to, um, to have a poor Black family from the beginning. It wasn't perfect because that was the, um, the blueprint. That was the blueprint. Um, and people were not used to seeing a soap like that because we were oversaturated with these black young men from the streets and these black middle class women that mellowed them down. Jesse, Jesse, Angie mellowed Jesse. Right. Let's be real about that. Mellowed because um Frank and Nancy were the ones who brought Angie at to be his tutor. Right. And he 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 couldn't stand her at first, but anyway. Um, but Bill Bell saw what was going on in Generation. So he had to, I mean, the Young Wrestlers had just became like the number one soap at that time. So
So he knew what he had to do. He was a businessman. Let's be real about that. He was a businessman. So let's capitalize on the African-American audience. And that's what he did. And Black women kept these lights going on. Black women kept these lights going on all these years. Yep. And uh, soap opera industry, you know, don't want, don't even want to even account them for anything. So through the ninth, the nineties, the two thousands, we saw all of this blackness with the uh, with the barbers, the winters, and other black people who came along the way. And black women were were telling their friends and their family about this show. Bill Bell, and what I respected about Bill was how he allowed Victoria Rowell, Auntie Vicky, to have um to come up with um to have leeway, because she was responsible for. Dave, Dave on coming onto the canvas because if it wasn't for Victoria's foster care experience, Dave, we would have never seen Dave on. And Brighton James is classic because he acknowledges her for doing that, for making him going out there to work and to eat. All right, and she did a lot of things. And the fact that um, there were crossover appearances between that and diagnosis of murder. You know, so it, it was popping. Let's be real, Drusilla, Olivia. Neil Malcolm, they were all, they were popping. So let's stop there for a second, because I'm going, I'm ready to digest everybody. You, you said a lot of everybody digest it all. Okay, you know, in a show. I know, because it's like, normally, I mean, I thought I'd make sure it's all, you know. Oh, you're saying some great stuff, so I'll make sure I get, I'm sure everybody at home gets it. So what, you know, what Donald's bringing up, again, is another thing. It's, it's all relates to today. And it's all relates to what's possibly lacking today with all these shows. So let's start with Young and the Restless. Young and the Restless was a place where, because I knew Christoph, and I remember we talked about it. He said, when he got an office, when he got an office set, people these a lot of no black folks had their own sets. It was like the white folks had a set, and then may may have converted pieces of it for a, a moment for a black person, or they black people were on sets. He got his own office, and what people may or may not even get the, the, the viewers they might even fully get. To see a young black professional in an office on daytime TV was huge. Because what Donald just said earlier, every person that was black was streetwise, street smart, street, 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 street. They showed him as a young businessman. And they wisely paired him with Victoria Rowell, chemistry flying out of there, mm -hmm. but also with Eric Braden. And he acknowledges it, and Eric's my friend also. I've been true, and Eric loves some black folks. I'm telling you right now, he loves black yep. folks. Oh, yeah. yeah. He comes to the hood, trust me. He goes places I don't go to. Um, I love Eric. Eric supports my career, so. But the joke was, for black folks, you were raised by Eric Braden. I mean, we, I mean, I mean everybody, every black mm -hmm. man, everybody loves Eric Braden. Mm -hmm. They love Victor Newman. Victor Newman's the bomb. Um, mm -hmm. Because he represents that victorious over something that they, he, he you know, rises above. Um, but Neil was one of his protégés. We never saw that either, that a white man could take a black man under his wing and, and he treated him with respect. He didn't treat him like, and to this day, when he talks to Devon and them, he treats them with respect. Yeah. To this day, their exchanges yeah. are like, nice to see you, man. How you doing? They shake hands. It's like, and he's like, Mr. Newman, blah, blah. I mean, it, it, there's a, there's a respect there. Him and Lily, too, say there's a respect there, which, again, they didn't have to do that. They never did it before. But to have a white man you know, show respect to these people, to black people, and it's natural, and it's also just it's, that's how it should be. I love it. And so, so going back to that time period, it starts with Neil and Drusilla ushering in the next generation of black folks on y &R, and I get I get to meet Victoria Rowell interviewer. We we share the same birthday, so I get a I get a lot of how she is. I totally get it. I'm the same. I'm exactly, us Tauruses. I'm more my, my sister nine years born. <laughs> this us May tenth. We're both May tenth, and that's how I met her. I go my birthday twin, and she came over, and, mm. and she's so regal the way she talks, and she's well spoken, and she's passionate, and she's and we're just so smart, and had a varied life. But she also cares about our people. This is race talk. So she cares about our people. She really wants the best for us in soap opera. 
behind the camera in front. Yes, there's a famous case where she tried to sue Sony, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to get into that part. That part's just that's it's already been overdone. I want to like, celebrate her because right. every scene she was in, I mean, God bless America, she was good. You could take your mm-hmm. eyes off her. You really couldn't. You know, and Shamar Moore, of course, he was just recently said he considered coming back to YNR. Of course, mm-hmm. Swan got, you know, uncanceled and went back and went back. Right. But he always, he's never forgotten where he's come from. He always talks about Christoph St. John. You know, the three of them, Christoph helped out both of these people. They, they, he really was there for them, and they were anchor for each other. You add Tiny Lee Williams in there, it's just, it's mm-hmm. just, it's, it's, a, it's, it was unbeatable. And they had storyline. Compared to today, they had major storylines. Yeah. Major storylines. And that, and, like, and that's what, I think it's what hurts a lot of us today, right, Donald? Because we're like, yeah. we, have, we at one point, we were on screen a lot. At one point, I'm not gonna rest this. Like we were on screen, that we were in charge of our own destinies too, right? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, this is a, this is what is disheartening to me to see after um 30 years of all of this blackness um on the Young and the Restless, because I always said, and I still say this today, I said after Christoph and Neil's death. I think the brasses, the powers that be knew, okay, that's gonna be it. Um, I I believe that as far as all of that, that that melanin pop and that blackness over there. And I just, you know, and I just really feel after Bill Bell Sr.'s death, a lot of things changed. So it's not really after Christoph's death, it started after Bill's death. Things started to change. Things started to change over there um, when it came to our people on that and on that set. Um, it's just very. It just it does. It doesn't seem like it's the same. It's the same show. Um, the black women. Where are they at? Um, the black women being cheated on. Um, by right. Right. black and white men. Yes. But white women, and I'm like, um, okay, what's what's up with that? Um. Cause that people are upset. People are upset about Lily, 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 um, Lily suing um Daniel, Daniel and Daniel Heather. Lily. Yeah, they Lily. Yeah, Daniel. and and then some some black people are like, oh, they don't even count Lily. I'm like, Lily is black. I okay, Lily yes. is okay. Sorry, I gotta stop you there for a second because I'm glad you said that, folks. Crystal Khalil is actually half Pakistani, half African-American, meaning half, she's black. She's black. She's black. She identified Mm -hmm. black. She looked to me black. But I've had so many folks, black folks go, she ain't black. Uh, In the eyes of the law and everything else, she's black. Trust me. Trust and believe. She go to Pakistan, they think she's black. They don't think she's Pakistani. Like, she knows what she is. And she's never denied it. She's never pushed like, and a, and she's been playing a black person. It's always like I remember a couple of years ago, like, how dare she play a black person? She's black, right? So I don't understand. I don't understand where that came from either. Homegirl's black, folks. I mean, she's as black as Ron Nicole Henry was on GH, and she was light skinned. She was black as yeah. I mean, yeah. like she's black. She's black, folks. So I, so I wish. I hope that I. I'm glad you said. That. I just hope that. That wherever that myth is, wherever people think, I just go because you're right. Our own people are like, she's not black. Like she's black. I don't know what else. To, I see black. What do you see, Donald? Do you see black? I think what I think what it is is that um, some of us feel that when we're in the media, we gotta be, we gotta be, we have to be um, what we think a sister girl. She's supposed to be sister girl. A um, hundred times a, a day. I understand it, yeah. you know, but we're not all we're not all sister sister girl, sister sister woman, sister lady. I get all of that. Yeah, I I would want Lily. I would want um her to be um more sister girl, but every every black person doesn't subscribe to sister girl or being conscious. And I understand what Jill Scott. Um, said when she was interviewed by Arsenio Hall doing his second incarnation. 
I understand what Jill Scott was saying because people would talk thinking, oh, she's supposed to be conscious, but Jill Scott's like, there's some days I don't want to be conscious. And I, I I get it now as a 47 year old man, because um when I when I was a teenager and started reading up on our history, I got angry there. You know, when we start reading our histories and learning that we've been lied to in these schools and in the society, we go through that stage in which, what? You know, we, we, we get angry. And then you get, and then, and then you go through real life scenarios as like, um, why aren't people not being, not, why aren't people not being conscious? Why aren't people not listening to what I'm trying to say? But then I realized, James, is that we, we all are diverse people. We're not monolithic. We have our own experiences. There's not one way to be Black. It's, there's not one Black experience. Yeah. I remember in the, in the libraries, there were sections in the libraries, the Black experience. I remember that because I was I was a I was a part time after school when I was eighteen. I remember that section. Okay, put all the black books, um, put all the black books in the black experience section. But then there were other, and then in the white section, there were authors who were black. So I brought that up in one of my branches. But anyway, so there's not one way to be black. Um, blackness is a state of mind, and. Um, I, th I think that's what it is. It's like she's, and then she never has been with a black man. Lily, I'm talking about about Lily. I don't. Yeah, yeah, um, no, um, no, I say that because some some of us, I know, we watch so much television, we think the characters are the same things as the, as the actor. No, yeah, know, these, know, like cycles, these yeah. are characters, yeah. and um, yeah, I wanted her with Tyler. I wanted her with um with Joy. But that's not how it happened. Well, let me start and, uh, let's, let's start different. Let's start different. Because that's something also we got. You just brought up something that's very important. Emmy winner Michelle Morgan. Two characters dynamic. Where the fuck is she? Brittany Sarpy, my girl. Mm -hmm. Where's she? Tosha Story is gone. The girl who played Imani is gone. Uh, like it's like it just does. It seems like. The black folks got smaller and smaller. We have Nate and, and Brighton. But let me ask, let me ask you this about Brighton. Uh, well, we have Sean who plays, Sean Dowdy plays Nate, and we have Brighton who plays Devon. I always said, I don't know how you feel about this. I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised they have not made Devon the next Neil, so to speak. Like, they haven't, he's assuming yeah. he should be the next leading man, right? And he's, yeah. and he's dating a Newman, and as far as a kid of the Newman, I don't know why they haven't elevated him enough. I think it's because he's black. To tell you the truth, I, I, I can't think of anything else. I can't think of any why, reason why he's not he's not up there with Adam and Nick. And I mean, he's been around for so long. He's been, he's been around for a long time. He's a, a, a multi-Emmy winner. We know he can do the work. Yes, he can play a dick sometimes. He can play a good guy sometimes. He's like He has all the elements. But do you agree with my assessment? Like that basically he's black because he's black. Yes, it is because he's black. Because he should have been, he should have had already his mansion already. He should be a, the CEO of his own um, business. Because I still have issues when Hampton Winters um, with that merger. Oh, I still have issues too. with that. I have issues with um, the only black legal um, firm, Amanda and Imani, um, just being absorbed in Chancellor Winters and this Jill. Jill want to run everything, and now Billy, Billy want to put his two cents in it. My thing, and even with Jill, because when Dave and I got that money, Jill, hmm, Jill, Jill was not for Dave on getting that money because Jill and Colin and I believe Kane, they yes. were conspiring to, to yes. take all the two. Um, they were they were contesting Dave on's um claim to um the captain's money. Dave on is was the woman's grandson. Jill, I'm just gonna go there. Jill, Jill was the woman from the other side of the tracks from the hood who married who married up. And Jill was not Catherine's daughter. That 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 um that stupid storyline was eradicated, thank goodness. Yeah. But Jill and and oh Jill Jill took Philip Chancellor III away from Catherine. That's the history. She was her hairdresser. She only became really her hairdresser because she had money. But and then she knew what she was gonna do. She took that that woman's 
husband away from her, made sure she had a child. So that's who Jill is. So, and I look at Jill like, I love Jess Walton. Jess oh, yeah, Walton, yeah. the actress, she's great. But yeah. Jill? Yeah. I just don't, and I just don't really understand that Lily, I mean, people say, oh, but her and Davon don't really know Mamie. That's a whole bunch of BS because I know Drusilla was calling Mamie on that phone. I know Drusilla was keeping abreast with Mamie about what was going on. Olivia, too. Yeah, oh, but they don't know them like that. Or because we didn't see it. Things happen off screen. And I have a little problem with a lot of stuff happening on off screen. Oh, yeah, we yeah. know Drusilla. We know Drusilla was keeping up with um, Mamie over the years after Jill gave her that money to get out of town. And you mean Tommy and Lily? Oh, I love you, Jill. All the stuff she did to her grand aunt. Oh, and that's another um thing. I'm on Goldie with that. You got a lot of these people. They mad that Mamie ain't cleaning toilet and she ain't wiping people's asses anymore. I know a lot of black women who who did who were domestics. Yes. My grandmother was a domestic. Okay, oh, my, oh, my. my grand. A lot of black women. That's all they were doing. Domestics. Um. And um, black women elevated, and see that's the thing people don't want to talk about. Black women elevated out of cleaning, clean, working in some white house, um, because the black husband, my grandfather too, a lot of our grandparents, they were military men. That's the thing we don't talk about. They were military men, and then black men had their um GI bills. Yes. Wait, wait. So All right. So point is, I agree with you. The point I agree with you is that they um. Mamie was a major part of the Abbott family. Yeah. Was a major character. Almost got with John, the whole thing. They got chicken yeah. on that too. But she, I, I, the, era the erasure of everybody's companies. And I just, it's just, I've had problems with it from the beginning. I've, I, on my shows, it's all timestamps. I've been talking about it forever. Um, but my whole thing is the erasure of just the black folks on there. It's yeah. just not really, you know, and yeah, interracial. I have another show doing interracial stuff, but I will just say briefly on there, I would be here for us. I'm I'm biracial. I would be here. I'm interracial. I would be here for us. I mean, my kids are going. We wouldn't be here. I get it. However, comma, it's okay to show same race love. Also, you could do you could do both. You could have both going on. And in fact, that Elena and and. Uh, Amanda were cheated on several times by these black men. There's optics, but so but so here's so here's what I want to ask you, because I've been asked this question, Donald, many times, and I have my own answer, but that I've answered. Do you think the soaps are racist? I'm not gonna say that they are racist. I'm just gonna say the optics, like you say, it's the optics. I don't, I don't believe everyone in those writing rooms are gonna say, "Oh, let's go in the writers' room, let's just be racist assholes." I'm not gonna say all of that. Um, it's just when they're writing stuff, some things look good on paper, but it doesn't look good on it. It doesn't look good on screen. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's let's break. Let's some. Um, let's have um, Nate and Dave on cheat on um, Elena and Amanda with. Um, Victoria and Abby, half sisters, two white half sisters, um, daughters of Victor. Okay, um, I mean, and then you you can you can argue also. Um, Abby and Davon have been friends for many a year. I know, I get it, I get it. Yeah, and you know, and then of course, oh, and but no, but Nate, with Nate and Victoria, Nate got the short end. He got treated like shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got he got treated like, uh, and you know, and the thing about it was, you know, and I think think even with Victoria, Victoria just wanted her D. There are some people in real life who would just want D. Yes, and and we it's have a good D, so we're like, we're not you, you it. know, and then it, then with that, it and then it goes into the whole black male stereotype from slavery. Um, we all supposed to have th th we supposed to have be well endowed like Lex and Steel. Well, I mean, some of us are okay. No, here's the no, here's the, no, here's the, here's the deal. <laughs> I did some of you. I mean, it's not the some of the stereotypes are true. I like to say, I guess. I yeah, size, yeah. I wear a size fourteen shoe, folks. Just want to say that. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. But no, I want to bring this up because this is almost related. It's a sister show. 
you said something that I totally want to bring up. Some I think I we see I agree with um with Donald. I've said I don't know if they're racist, but there are things that they don't think about, which means they don't think about race. Because we're talking Mandingo, we gotta bring up, we gotta bring up my buddy Lauren oh, St. Peter on bowl. Let's bring it up. Yeah. On paper, it sounded probably fine. It's like, okay, well, quarter was hot. Him and him and Rita Soul. Oh, yeah. Because I mean the chemistry off the charts. But then when he added Eric back in there to basically yeah. hire him, like I think on paper yeah. it sounded salacious. It sounded like ooh, yeah. it's like crazy. But every black person was like, so and that's what you said that I was like, yeah, the whole Mandingo slave, um, you know, the the, the hot love, the hot just beastly lover. That you're right, it did play that, and even I felt a little like, Ooh. I mean, it was a, it was a little cringe for me too because I thought, yes, I don't. But what's funny is the younger soap fans I talked to you didn't know what Mandingo is. They didn't know what Mandingo was. No, they're black. They no. know what it is. We know what it is, but they're yeah. like, "Wait, talk about James? Why are you so upset?" I'm like, "You don't understand what this thing is. This is the King Kong syndrome. This is all yeah. that that you and I know this stuff. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I know Gen Z. I think is a little different now, but the rest of us, we know it. We know what it looked like to yeah. us. Yeah. But I don't know. I but I would not say Bold and Beautiful was racist. I think on paper they thought, "Here's a great storyline." We'll just do it so it's tone deaf. Do you do you agree with that kind of stuff? Yeah, I I I agree with your assessment. Um, because when um when Carter and Quinn started appearing in scenes together in that in those ways, I knew I knew they were going to screw. I said that way before it happened. I said they they I said on Twitter they're going to screw because you know you've been watching soap operas for years. You can kind of tell okay they they're testing chemistry. Let me tell you, Lawrence and Rena had that chemistry. Because when they I did. seen that, I was like, what? And I love Rena more because Rena spoke out she about did. him not having his own his own dressing room. So I, I respect Rena for yeah. doing that. So I'm gonna always respect her that, but she got to know Lawrence on, on the acting level because we've seen him in scenes, um, him appreciating weddings and all that, mm, you know, that's a here there. But when they got together, and then and then you got um Eric Foster, I was like, oh no, this is this is like slavery, Jim Crow, Mandingo, right. that movie with right. Ken Norton and all that stuff. I was like, nah, this is not no, not a good. No. This is not a good look. No. Um, just penis stuff and Donna with her honey. I was like, nah. I had to laugh though. I had to laugh when Donna pulled out that honey in that off. All of a sudden, his he wrecked out, uh, wrecked out the dysfunction went away. I'm like, that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, that was cringe. But I just didn't like the way how when Carter finally got with um Quinn, all of a sudden Quinn couldn't commit herself to him and all. And it's like he on it, he's not doing anything. He goes, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it. Him and Katie yawn, yawn, yawn. Right. But even the Bone and Beautiful now, <laughs> no black went over the odd. No black females over in that bold and that beautiful. And I'm just gonna say, I really felt that they phased out Paris for Luna. These soaps do that a lot of times. They phase yeah. out African Americans for other nationalities. Right. Nobody then, wants to talk about that. But but here's the thing too. Let's 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 we yeah, we have to bring this up because on the sister show, I think they phased out. Um, Allie, uh, Asian chick for mm -hmm. Mike Rosaleka, who plays Audra. Yeah. Yeah. It came on around the same time. Yeah. 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 I think so. So, I mean, it's happening. I mean, it's like we can't have too many people of color, period, on the same time, right? Kind of weird. It's like, so I agree with you on that. I feel like Paris was phased out for Luna. That's literally the storyline she should be in. Paris should be in yeah. that story, literally. Um, and and it's not even talking about my Selena Wu on GH. Why my Lydia look isn't on every day. I don't, don't even start out why she's not on every day. Because she is like dynamic. Everybody, everybody loves her. They love the actress. They love the portrayal. But again, she's Asian. We don't, we don't even see her. So that's a whole, that's a whole other story, right? I mean, that's a whole story. But back to the uh, Luna and Paris thing, I agree with you. Literally. 
And it's like, um, but, and I said on Twitter, people always coming after me. I love it. I love it when people come after me because I oh, I come up with the receipts. I'm a, I'm a smart cookie. I'm a librarian. I'm an avid reader. I'm just a smart, I'm a, just a smart person overall. Um, I can come up with the, with the receipts. People come after me and I said, you know, I was saying how some black people, they dog Diamond White. They were dogging her about her oh, hair. When I interviewed her, okay, so side note. So folks yeah. at home, you ever call out yeah. Why not many spotlight? No, don't be for me spotlight uh, with Diamond White. I talked to her. I said, yeah. let's talk about your hair first. And she was like, oh, my school. And she said, thank you. Let's talk about it. Because I said, let's, mm-hmm. okay, not even just, okay, not even just that, Donald. I had to explain to some white folks that for black women, hair is like an accessory. Another accessory. They will click in some hair one day and click it out the next. Because they're like, how does someone have a short hair do? Like, it's called a weave. And white folks have been doing extensions and falls and yeah. weave for years yeah. also. Trust me. It's yeah. not just black folks. But no. for some reason, they're coming on <laughs> black folks here. I'm like, and why does Diamond have her hair like that? And I'm like, she can have her hair with the fuck she wants it. And right. we had a really big discussion about it on my show, and it was kind of sad that we had to, we had to take up time because we had a beautiful conversation. Other, I mean, after, other than that too, of the rest of her life, but like we had to, we had to, we had to address it because people kept bringing it up, and she wanted the opportunity to say something. And I, again, I love my black women. Please, the floor is yours. Say what you had to say. And we talked about it. So you check out the episodes. It's it's a it's a bone beautiful face spotlight with uh, Diamond White, and we had to talk about it because. She kept getting all this hate for her hair. And even maybe, same thing. They're like, this is like a Raggedy Andy the Ann doll. Why is it hair? I think that's a black hairstyle, first of all. You guys need to put some respect on that. Um, that I was so offended by seeing some of the talk about her hair. I'm like, wow. You guys don't do that to black white folks' hair. It's all black folks stuff. They do it to black folks. It's really, it's very interesting. Yeah, and I'm just like. I love Victoria. Ray. I love I love her braids. Um, being a woman of a certain age, I love that uh, uh, an older woman. I love the fact is that older black women on soaps period because there oh. weren't a lot. There weren't a lot of older black women on soaps back in the day, you know. Yeah. So I, I I loved it. You know, I love Mamie's. I love her new chapter of of a, a businesswoman. I love that because again, I know a lot of black women who. Were not they were not going to be domestics all of, all of their lives. They um black women upgrade a lot of black women upgraded, got out of those homes and did stuff for 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 themselves. And you you get the heat, but then it's coming. But then they got to attack mainly for the hair. It, it's 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 like it's like people can't attack the actor or the actress, so they got to find a physical attribute to attack her hair, the skin color, the nose, the lips, everything. And I'm like, yeah, the 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 um, yeah, the hatred is is out there, and it's sad how lo- some of our people, our own people, um, yeah. be on the oh, her hair, she she too dark, she too light, it, it, all that stuff is just a lot of trauma, oppressive systems, yeah, enslavement, Jim Crow, and there's a lot of there's a lot of trauma. Um, we we got to definitely go there. Um, a lot of trauma with a lot of these black women fans. A lot of trauma. Well, Lots you know, of trauma. So here's how we're gonna go. We're gonna, we're going we're going ten next. We've been on here for twenty. We've already been on for an hour. So we're, we're gonna get we're gonna get to this part. Uh, this, this is a space. <laughs> this is a space, folks. I, I, gotta, I gotta keep it. Another thing. So the latest big thing, of course, is Sabrina slash Trina G H. Um, you know all of them. Although all the the black hospital. We'll just say that. We already touched on the Y and R crowd of crap, and everything. So that we, we actually took all the soaps away. So now you now are back on to this. Oh, we're on to this now. <laughs> General Hospital. Um, first of all, like I said I support black women. I do, and I know they're one of the most othered of of the othered groups. Um, very underrepresented, um, ignored, um, put upon, um, and depending on your skin color, um, then add that in there too. And weight, add that in there too. Either you're mm-hmm. fetishized to one end or you're ignored on the other. Um, they have a wide, they have a, sorry, General Hospital, they have a wide range of shades and hues and colors on there. That part, I, I love that part. I do love that part, for sure. 
However, comma, um, their usage of them has been suspect. We'll say that at, at best. Now we're going to we're going to, we're going to talk about this because you mentioned black women's trauma, and I know there's a lot of black women who have who were really are really into this Sprina. They they basically have run it. They read the Sprina Trina storyline. They are they are invested. I've talked to them over the years, and I get their investment. It almost feels like we finally got something. We're going to hold on to this. We're going to watch this. We're going to make sure this is not taken for granted. And so I, but I know that that's caused dissension, even amongst black other just black folks who want subs. Some say, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm folks, I'm just, I'm just commenting what people say. Some say, oh, is that white man worship? You know, why are we, because this is race talk, it's about everything. White man worship, you know, just like mean, she should be with a black man. You know, why, why are we worshiping them together? Blah, blah. Others say it transcends race. Uh, in real life, obviously, Nicholas Chavez was white presenting, but he was actually Latino. Um, but there's still that whole white, but they say it's more about the connection. They like the, the chemistry of the actors. There's all that. So there's that contingency. Um, there, and then underneath, lying underneath all of that, there's a whole thing of the savior complex. You know, it, are, are some of these black women underneath that? They, just, they, they wish it happened for them because black men aren't checking for them. Uh, and then also for me, a lot of black men, we have not done our women work correctly. We haven't. Generationally, we just, my father, mm -hmm. not about your father, they, 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 did, they did not, we have, we have not treated our, that's why I, I'm so, I hold my black women so strongly because we have done a disservice to them in many ways. When black women will hold you down mm -hmm. regardless, mm -hmm. I almost cry actually saying that. I have cried talking about before. Um, but I think it's just very serious. So there's a lot. So let's unpack all that. It's a lot. So folks, I'm just saying, I'm just saying things that I'm hearing and what the, the thoughts are. So if you don't start trying attacking me, I'm just telling you, this is what people are, these are all valid things people are talking about when it comes to race and this coupling and the girl Trina. And for, and before I let, I'm gonna let um, Donald speak, my I want to make sure it's clear for me, I'm a Trina fan first. I want Trina to have equity like all the other white actors and actresses. I want her, I want her, I want um, Brooke Kerr, I want Tisha Harper, I want these black women, Renee Wild, I want these black women on the show to have equity and chances like any other actress. So I'm, I'm, so I'm for them first. So if it means giving Trina other story until there's a Spencer or something, I'm for it a million percent. I make sure I want to say it, but I have, I have no problem with her and Spencer. I'm just saying that I want Trina to have a life on the show. Also, sorry, that's my whole that's my whole disclaimer and beginning. You've been out there talking about it, so come on, Donald, tell me what's going on. You've been out there talking about. It. See, the thing about it is, um, I, it, I, you know, I, I think of, I was thinking today, um, earlier today when I was clean, cleaning up here, I was thinking, um, years ago, I was thinking even when Passions was on. It was interesting because it seemed like during the 2000s, there was a lot of more emphasis on inter interracial couplings, um, unlike the black, black, black love coupling. And that we're talking about close to like 25 years ago, 25, 30 years ago. And I noticed that trend because I do remember um, when Soap Opera Digest used to have their what's in, um, oh, yeah. what's in, yeah. what's out. And I kind of got, I kind of got mad at Stephanie Sloan for saying what's out after Americans. I've got, I, I took it a certain way. I took yeah. it a certain way. Um, because I'm like, out. I mean, I I get that there was a blackout. There was a blackout. Um, 2000, 2001. There was a blackout. Um, they weren't a commitment to us um at that time. But how a lot of people loved um Eve and Juliet, but did not love Eve and TC. Right. So I I noticed that, and there was a there was a lot of fandoms for Eve and for Julian, and I'm like, what? Um, and then I I remember an into joint interview with um Amelia Marshall and Tracy Raw, and I remember them saying that um, black women should be able to 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 be in interracial um storylines, 
and they did agree on this. Um, and I, I, I got what Amelia and Amelia and Tracy were saying, um, about that. So I did, did notice that, and I also noticed the when Evangeline, Evangeline Williamson, seemed like she got more popular when she was paired with John McBain, because she was with R.J. at first. They did, the writers didn't want to invest in she R.J. Was a, she was and R.J. She was with um, Christian at one point. Yeah. She went through the spectrum of races, but yeah. you're right. Once she got with John McBain, which is actually the character I like, John McBain, it's another scary story. Um, they, they, they went, her stock went up, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I but I was trying to be nice. I was yeah, like you know, like I'll say, I'll fucking say it. Like, 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 uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, her currency, the currency, and I and and I'm and I think like and I'm looking at uh, what's going on with Sabrina. I love Trina. Trina had a life before Spencer came back to town, and that's where I, we I would say we can we agree. We just want her to have a life until Spencer comes back. Like let um let her be in the gallery. Let her let let let, let her be the college um student that she is yes and let 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 trina live her life as i don't i don't want to see her just as the bestie the, yeah. the talk to because yeah. that was the history that we we encountered during the 60s yeah. the 70s yeah. and 80s yeah. the 90s right it started shifting in the 90s yeah. but from the 60s to the 80s we were the best friends we were the talk to no storylines of our own we they we listened to the white characters, what they were all going through. We didn't really have our own stuff. And um, well, you, 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 well, you know, here, here's one exception. I'll give you one exception. And actually, he's working more now than he was before. I thought it was, I would say Abe. Abe was one of the few people yes. who later, yes. Yes. once he got Lexi, he had story, they had storylines galore. Yeah. And then now yeah. he's, he's in story. I mean, I, I remember he's like, he's like, I'm old. I'm in all these storylines now. Like, he's like, he's working. Like, he's like totally working. But he's one of the few. Like he's probably the only one that yes. had actually. So anyway, so go ahead. So go ahead. But that's what makes you say that. I forgot about Abe, and I'm I'm glad that you brought up Abe, yeah. um, James. I thank thank you for doing that. Yes, Abe. When him and Lexi got together, well, when she was played by Renee Jones, they they were four of the actresses before Renee yeah. Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they took off. Um, yeah. and then and then even with Lexi, her currency went up too sure when is. um it was revealed Stefano was her daddy. So yeah. her, her yeah. currency went up too, because yeah. when she was just there as the um the cop, the doctor, yes, yes, like, mm. oh, yeah. Yeah. and you know, and but I'm gonna say I loved um Lexi in that red dress. That's what I'm that saying. She was dress. bad Lexi. She was a Demira. She was bad <laughs> Lexi, and she was there. And she was there wearing that red dress. Yes. Um, yes. um, keeping the fact that. Um, she had bone holes. Zach, yes, she wasn't yeah. telling them, yeah, and, yeah. and and just just her, just her sleeping with Brandon, sleeping with. Yeah, um, don't get me started. Tat. I said Tanya Boyd, the oh, original yes. celeb. That yes. queer, that queer. Oh elegance. yes, she was the bomb. She was the bomb. Oh yes, elegance, elegance, just the bomb diggity. I just, I just, yeah. But, but anyway, as we we're saying about. Today, I'm sorry, you're saying about Sprina and Trina. I'm sorry, I want you to go back and to that. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, because um, like you said, this is this is all inter 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 interconnected because yeah. of how even Celeste with that blonde hair yes. at that time, I was like, what? I On know. a daytime soul? I know. It was like, what? And Tanya Boyd, um, we're gonna keep her in prayer because she's still recovering from a stroke. Yeah. So we, we're gonna keep Tanya in prayer. But the fact how Lexi, Lexi was doing all this stuff, sleeping with two fine ass men, Brandon and Chad. I still remember that. I still remember the episode when Lex, Le Lexi was getting her back broke out in that car, and a Abe was walking around outside looking for Lexi. Tech, he was on top of her. I was like, what? Ooh. Oh yeah. my god! But it's hey, but go back to Evangeline. Yes. Yes. Um, I think she was nominated for um, um, I think a soap opera digest award or a, um, oh, daytime Emmy. And when they read Renee Elise Goldberry's name in the audience, who who it was like wow, you know. And a lot of black women they reference back to Evangeline, to her relationships with John, even Todd to a point, and with Christian. Yes. 
Oh yes, yes. You know, I'm kind. I'm just. I'm just upset with with them not investing in Evangeline and um Layla Tika 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 Sumpta. Um, oh, and even Layla. No. Layla was with Christian as well, but then she was she was with Vincent Jones. But Vincent Jones was pretty much wanting to get with Natalie. But oh boy, both actresses have moved on clearly. At home, yeah. girl was on in Hamilton and blah blah. So everybody, so everybody's doing great after that. After once they live off the air, and everybody's doing, just like this, this little, everybody's doing fine. But um, they, but but I just think the trauma with a lot of the Sprina fans is um the fact that you had um Gia. No, wait, women. Um Gia was one of them. Gia, um, and it's a no oh Keisha. Go back to Keisha, Maya. Keisha, Gia, and yeah. Maya. Those are the ones. And they were with white males. Yep, they were. Even though Gia her first betrayer, Maria Marissa Ramirez, was not African American, um, and it's it's I like Gia though. I liked the Gia um, when she was played by Marissa. Yeah, me too. I liked her, um, but when she Marissa left to do the short lived show Miracles, and uh, uh, Andrea Pearson replaced that real African American actress. Um, the investment just wasn't there. And um, but these three women were with white males and they were faded out. So there's this fear that Trina is going to get faded out because of this history. So I've said that all the time, and I I, I let the black women know I love black women. I, I I love my sister girls, my sister women, my sister ladies. My grand my grandmother Sally, who raised me, black woman, Tootsie Row, black woman. My mother, black woman, aunts, cousins, black women, black women friends. I've grown up around black women a lot. So I, I I honor and I love black women. So I have to make that point clear because um I had said something, I had put a tweet, and people, oh, people got mad with me because I was I was saying how it was funny how black women want Lily with a black man, but don't want Trina with one. Oh, you would have thought I created World War Three. I was saying the irony behind it. That's what it was. It was the irony. It was a pop culture um, observation. Yeah, that's all. Oh yeah. no, they took it like I'm attacked. Oh, they're not. They're not the same. Okay, I wasn't saying they were the same. I'm just saying that these are two different black women on daytime soaps. It was an observation. Like these are the observations I'm going to make when I write this draft. Right. I have to make these observations. When you're researching, okay. you're analyzing things. You're going to make observations, and you're going to also make um, contrast. Yep. So that. they took it. So I had to go in this one of the spaces, and I had to make it clear. I had to make it plain. I was a saying of how um, I, I was using it as an irony. It, it is was an it irony. Is. Right. It wasn't an attack, and I had said that I just didn't like the fact that I was attacked. For even saying that, and I said, y'all know, y'all know me all of these years where I stand when it comes to my people on these soaps. Yeah. You know, is I'm not anti Trina, I'm not anti black right. woman, but some people are, and I have to yeah. make them sure. I have to make them okay. I'm not one of those people, but what it is is that a lot of black women have been hurt yeah. by a, some of us, and I have to make it clear. I'm a black man. But don't put me in that box, you know. And so it it comes because you got to also consider what are going on in these fans' lives and these fans off social media life. Um, do they not want Trina with a black man because of what they went through, or do they just want it as a super couple? Because I was just trying to make that. Um, I was saying that something similar happened on Days of Our Lives with David and Valerie. Um back in the 70s when Days Our Lives brought on Michael Warren right. to play a suitor for Valerie, Jerry. Right. But, but but you know what it is? I just think a lot of the women, they, they didn't know what I was talking about because a lot of the women are young. They're very young. So they don't even know about this stuff. So when you read off the names, that's to familiarize 
um, you're stuck with them. Like, there are a few people in the rooms, like Miss Pat, right. Ashley, they know the history. They're older. Yeah. So they, they they could understand what I'm saying. But a lot of the other, they're, they're learning about this for the first time. They're looking at um, the scenes with Trina for the first yeah. time. So they don't really know about the histories there. This is why um, we are given the flowers to these rich histories. So I was just trying to say back then, they their lives because Tina Andrews was getting a lot of hate mail, all niggas, mm -hmm. nigger, and all these other derogatory terms. So they their lives um, tried to de-escalate it by bringing a black man on there, but everyone my knew, thing, everyone, well, who, yeah. My thing was, um, I got flat a couple of years ago because I suggested Trina, a black man for Trina. And I said, and it was funny because it's when they brought Rory on. And Rory was male other, right? Yeah. Michael Collins, whatever. Um, and and they were all excited about him. They're like, well, until she gets with Spencer, they're all excited. But then they saw his old tweets, and all of a sudden that changed. But anyway, that's just that's his fan fickleness. Um, but my thing, my I said, my suggestion just is, it always has been and still will be. We don't have young black love on any soaps. Mm -hmm. So if you want young black viewers to tune in, let's why can't we have one? And I said, I think right. it's and for me, why I've mentioned Trina is because at least well, I have a black friend or deciding why not? Why is that a, why is that bad? I think it's I think it's something good, but also Nicholas Chavez ain't coming back on, or he's not on right now. He's busy doing his other thing right now. So until they either recast the role or decide what they're gonna do with Spencer, I don't want Trina floundering. And right. so again, why not bring on a black man for her? And then they have a nice little romance or whatever's going on. We know that Spencer and her end game. We do know this. This is soap telling. Then Spencer right. comes back from the dead. Right. And then she's like torn. I mean, there's a whole thing you do with it. There's a, there's a whole storyline. But why? So for people to say, why not black? Why, why not black? So it's like, it could be, I mean, like, why, why not give her? Why not give her that? No, why, why not? Why is that? Why is this a bad thing? to see young black love. And that's why I posted with uh, Angie and Jesse. I'm saying we just don't, we just don't have on any of these soaps because we don't even have, because they got rid of um, uh, Faith and, and Homeboy from Young and the Restless. They had a little interracial thing, but he's not on the show anymore either. It's like, there's a lot, there's like no, I, again, representation does matter. And I think we can spread it around. Like, why not? Um, so I don't think, I, don't, I, don't, I will stand by it. I'm like, I, so I say, I understand you want the, you want the Sprina, romance to continue or have some kind of wrap up. I told I'm with you on that. It's fine. But I say in the meantime, while they're not focusing on Spencer right now, they're this I want them to focus on Trina. I just think there's nothing wrong. And I, I will never apologize for same race love. I, I just like again, I don't think against interracial because I I'm part of it. But I'm like, but I'm just saying that I'm I will never not say it's okay to have two black people get together on screen. We have nobody on screen. That's doing that. And I'll, and someone brought up Zeke and Jordan or whatever. I say, they're not young. Sorry, kids. That's not young. I want right. them too. Trust me. They were hot. Right. I want them too. Yeah. I'm talking young, teenage to 20s. That I'm sorry, to 30. That's young. Sorry. Tanisha and them, they're probably in there. They're playing older. They're playing a character. She's playing right. someone's love of become a grandmother. That's something right. Totally right. different. Like young love, and so yeah, we have this new girl at the um at at, at Bobby's. Maybe she'll turn to something. There's also Deanna, the nurse, has been there for years, but they have yeah. the same nurse. So I'm like, no, there's promises out. Don't forget, Felix has a sister that's out there. That was with yeah. TJ. There's a, I mean, there's a whole bunch. I I'd rather have. I mean, I'll care if it's TJ. I mean, he, like I said him and Molly to me are boring as fuck. So I, I have nothing. Yeah, to do with that. yeah. So I'm saying I just need something. I don't mind. We need something to even out the rest. Yes, we have Portia and Curtis. Okay, that's fine. But again, they're older. They're playing old. Right, right. So I'm like, why can't we have that in a younger form? But again, I get the same token that you want the Sprina thing to have a resolution or some continuation. But for right now, it's not going to happen. So until then, let's give Trina and some stories, keep her front burner. And that's one way to do that. That's not the only way. Like so she had a life. I mean, I love to see her in the gallery or stuff. But I don't understand why it's a. I will always, I will always advocate for black. Like I'm like Issa Rae. I root for everybody black. 
I'm always, I'm always gonna advocate somebody black. I'm like, like, why not? Let's bring some more black folks in the show. Like, why not? I mean, it's why not? I'm looking at the timelines, and James, I'm gonna say it. It's sick. I think it's sick when you have a lot of all people. I don't want to see black love like that. And I'm like, that's sick. I know. That's a sick. That's a sickness, dear. I'm like, oh, but you gotta understand, Sprina's Endgame. I get all of that, you know. But I, I, I just think like, but why they, why they, they can't say it for TJ? Why they can't say it for Jordan? Why they can't say it for anyone? Because with me, I like you said, I, it's, it's, it's a super cup. So they're gonna go through the obstacles, you know. But I, I just think because of black women not seeing themselves represented in media it's like no we don't want it's 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 the fact that they don't want her to fade away because yeah. the um the the sad um part of the history is that many of us have been faded out of these soaps for no reason no goodbye anything no maybe a birthday cake on the set but right. um not even that there's Lil 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 Lillian Heyman she got a pink slip. She was going home for the weekend. Secretary yep. came outside, give her a pink slip. So no, no birthday cake, or anything, you yep. know. And her, her and Carla, they were, you know, faded out. And Al Freeman faded out. I know. You know what? So it's that fear that they're gonna fade out this dark skin girl, and the fact that she's dark skin, that's big to a lot that's of big. um, women, um, dark skin women who don't see themselves often in media because um, as we see in uh. Hollywood movies, a lot of the young leading ladies are light skinned or biracial. You know, so that that's a lot of there's just a lot of being told, okay, you're not, you're not beautiful, you're not attractive, you're not virtuous, you're not this and that. You don't because around the world, white women are put on the pedestal globally. You, you, you know, so when we're dealing with globalization and you as a black woman, you're not even part of that. You you're a worker, you you're a worker to produce the globalization and wealth, but you're not the major player on that stage. So black women looking at Trina as big, cause there's um, one woman, I'm not gonna name her name, but one woman, she said, it's not, uh, it's not just a soap for me. Trina oh, yeah. is everything, you know? So, and the thing about it, when we see ourselves, there is a lot of self-esteem, a lot of self-esteem, you know, our self-esteem start getting boosted. So it, it's that fear. So they figure that okay, they put it with a black man, they're gonna fade them out. So it, okay. it's it's that it's that it's that trauma. It's a trauma. But you but you um, have, but they have to realize they have to realize on days of our lives, there's Elani. Thank Either you. Either show right now, but they come on back. They're still together. Thank they're you. Huge. I mean, it can happen. They can be front burner storyline. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have to advocate for it. But I want to say to the Spina fans, you know, as they know. I was there. They asked me to be there when the plane was flown over, and I was there. Yeah. And I will say, I was there with her mother and Tabiana, both of them. Love them both dearly. Well, we had a, a we the three of us had a moment, and Tony Moore was there with me, and Walker was there. We were there. Us, us black folks had a moment together. It was like I remember saying, "Your name is so unique; it has never been seen on a plane flyer." Because yeah. Nicholas made a joke. My name is Common. It's everywhere. So we that, but that was that was a real moment. It was like her, I told her mother, "You named her that," and you think you know, twenty years later, it'd be on a flying over Prospect Studios in Los Angeles, and it was. We almost started crying. It was a really touching. So, folks who yeah. weren't there, I was there. So I get how important for Black women this is. Yeah. I was talking to a Black woman and another Black woman with Black men, and we were all we were all feeling it. When Michelle Morgan one lead actress. I was at the Emmys. I was there. Mm, yeah. And me yeah, yeah. and Walker and Tony were all kind of like, we heard she won. We almost cried there too. It was kind of like, we kept yeah. saying, we didn't know how important it would have fe felt to us that history was made and we were there to see it. And I was able to interview her yeah. and all day afterwards. But it was like, when we heard, when we heard it, so we get, this is more for a lot of us. This is more than yeah. just a show. And I sincerely understand that because I'm, I'm in the yeah. trust me, I'm in the business. I yeah. see the racism, I see the craziness, I see the fading, yeah. I see it. So I know you guys are holding on tight. And yeah. I'm, but I'm telling you, there's a couple instances I'm telling you where I really did feel it too. I was like, wow, 
We got to protect Michelle Morgan at all costs. So then when she got let go, I was like, what? Um, you know, and I'm saying, and then they, they said, we'll bring her back from here and there. And whenever she comes back on, she's dynamic. So it's like, you guys don't even know what you have here. Right. Even when she was back as Hillary, you have no idea what you have here. So I get this. So to, to my message to the Sprina fans, especially, I see, I see you and I hear you. You know I do. But I'm just telling you, I was, I was there, those crucial moments where I did feel it. And Tabiana was really touched by that. And her mother, even more so, was like, my daughter is inspiring this, as she said to me. And these are these are moments we didn't film. This is moments we just was just off camera, us just talking. Um, on a beautiful, it was a beautiful day. Just like this cloud, just it was clear, and it was like it was like this beautiful day in Los Angeles. It could have been, it could have been done even better, I thought. And it was these black women who came together to make that banner happen. Um, and I and I they get all the points in the world, and I so I get from many of them. And that's why I keep saying it's about present, it's about representation. Yeah. I want to see more of us stuff like us on there represented too. And I, whether it's interracial or same, it should be both at all yeah. ages. So, yeah, so you keep bringing these other people up. Like, if I'm talking young love, if people can see young love in all its forms, and so we start on the gay stuff because no, that's all absent right now too. We so start on that. But if we see it all in all forms, what a better society we can be especially when it comes to soap opera, which goes out to the whole country and they can see this. And I just think it should be both. It should be, it should be both, not just one. Yeah, there should be, there should be both. There's room for both, you know, and this is the issue that I have with some Twitter people, soap Twitter, and I'm like, it's, there's room for both. Um, I, I want to see joy. I want to see Jordan um, in the storyline of her own. I don't, I, I don't want her to see, I don't want her to be in this Curtis orbit. That that's history. Um, I want Jordan to live her best life. Um, um, I really, if Zeke can come back, I would love or oh, detective Bennett. Oh, his, um, his finance. Um Woo! I'm like, where he, come, where, where he come from? I'm like, he was a slob. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. And also, I was thinking, who had her man to her henchman? I was like, where he come from? Oh yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, where did he... oh, and um, Sonny's bodyguard Kevin. Yes. Where he come from? I was like, where they all these brothers coming is. in? Because I be watching, and I'm like, where they come from with all the all these fine looking these fine looking brothers? Hey, 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 here we go. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Teshner, who is yeah. the Emmy winner, yeah. my buddy, Mark. <laughs> like, Mark, you're doing some good work out there, because I'm like, dude, like, these people, I'm like, whoo. I'm like, all right. He was like, nah. Oh, it, it, or, or even if they um, want to, I don't know, and then some people was like, um, Jagger. Well, no, see, I, I don't mind her and Drew. I'm sorry, I don't mind her and Drew. I don't mind it. Sorry, I like, I kind of like their chemistry. Don't bother me. They had chemistry at the at the daytime Emmys. Um, yeah. they had chemistry when they were presenting Cameron yeah. and Tanisha. They did yeah. have that because yeah. I'm like they put them up there for a reason. Yeah, and my thing is Tanisha. First of all, I've, I've seen her in person. She glides across the red carpet. She's just beautiful. She was beautiful as fuck. And I'm like Tanisha. Men should be falling at her feet. First of all, I mean, they should be. But she's just beautiful. I forget her and TJ are a mother and son. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. They got they they're mother and son. Um, she's hot. She's hot. Yeah, and, and I think she should be utilized. And I don't know why they. I mean, that was the previous regime, so I don't know what's going on there. But I don't know. Maybe he'll come back. Who knows? Maybe maybe the new regime was like they stay. Well, maybe they'll say we need Gavin Houston back. I don't know. Don't know why her daddy was hot too. I don't know why he. I mean, oh, yeah, Rico Rojas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I was like, wow. Like when I saw him and Gavin on that on that uh, at. Portia's wedding. I was like, they cast her family. I was like, like, get out of here. They cast her family. I was like, besides her mother, but they cast her father and bro. I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, these fine, these, okay. these fine, fine ass men. And I was like, get out of here. Um, and he, Portia, oh, I loved Portia um, putting Kevin, Lori, and Alexis in their places. And people, they was trying to come at me, oh, but. She um she was up in Esme. I said first of all that was under another writing regime. Yeah, right, right, right. That was under Chris and Dan. And it's like, but I just think what is with that, and I and I put it on. Everybody want to come after me. Hey, bring it on. 
Um, some people do have issues with um, Porter sassing white women. I know. Sassing yeah. white women. And that goes back to slavery and Jim Crow. Same, um, same stuff. Some of us don't, you know, some of our grandparents were scared. You sassed or walked on the same sidewalk as a white person. Dang, 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 we're not pretty. You know, so our grandparents, great grandparents came from that South. And they saw stuff in real time. So the stuff is in, is ingrained. Yeah. Oh, 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 we can't have that. We can't have, no, because what it is is that James also, the way how we were written um, decades ago, oh, just be the nice best friend. Be the nice talk to. Don't speak back. Don't have a life of your own. Don't want a desire to get fucked. They supposed to get fucked and everybody else. You know, and so it's like, and we're in 2024. You were telling me she can't say what she want to say to Anna, Laura, and Alexis, because I'm still like, they deserved it by, by the way. Because you mean telling me they had that segregated um, service for Spencer? So you mean telling me Laura and Alexis had not come to Trina, no, Trina, to offer their condolences? How, how are you doing, honey? Because Laura was calling Esme honey and darling and all that stuff. It's like, I don't like the, the writing they're writing for Jeannie. I'm yeah. like, I, I'm like, really? And that's all I said. No, but but you know, James, every time I say something, uh, uh, oh, no, I've, you know, I've got but, it too. I've got it too. I've got it too. <laughs> you know, and I just really think with that, I just think some people, some people don't like black people to say anything. We're not supposed to say a word nope. about any anything. So this is why you have some people in this country right now, they want to take it back to 1924 or 1824. And don't want us to say, we, they want muscles all, muzzles over our mouths. Don't say a word. Don't say anything. You say something, oh, you anti. I'm not anti anything. I have, a, I have a voice. You have a voice. We all have voices. We have a right to have voices. But then, but you remember when, so, when um, we didn't have the social media, a lot of us did not write to the shows. A lot of us did not write to the soap, the soap magazines. I got right. some of these old soap magazines here for the research, daytime TV, dust over women, dawn women, dust over women, dust over dawn soap fan magazines in the 70s. Yep. We weren't even on the list of the popular soap actors. They were all white. 72, 74, 77. Well, and thank God, thank God for Ellen and for Al for having the first black wedding. That's not discussed enough. The first black wedding ever with Lawrence Fishburne right there as their, their yeah. adopted son. And what's not also talked about at all is the first black wedding on days was Ilani. Yeah. 45 years into the soap. Yeah. Yeah. There's some stuff that we have. We're a long way, baby. We're a long way. But we, we've made some strides. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you know, and then I'm like, because I, you like you, like you, I call, I call shit out. I've been calling shit out since I was a little boy. So this is what part of who I am. And um, my mom, I got that from my mother on her side of the family. My mother is like, my, that's why me, me and us, we, we clash. We're so much alike. Um, we're both Pisces, very much alike. Um, so I've been that way all a long time. Um, I had to learn to advocate for myself. I had to advocate for myself verbally. So I have a mouth. So I I call stuff out. I've always called stuff out. Even though I was told, oh, Don Jr., you don't know what you're talking about. No, I, I know what I'm talking about. That's why my grandfather, I don't, he didn't really want me to speak because he was doing some stuff out the house. And he knew my grandmother was going to ask me certain questions. So when you have that mouth, use that mouth. Use those fingertips um, for the good. You know, and, and truth telling. We're we're truth tellers, truth tellers, um, journalists, writers, authors. We're always attacked. Oh, li librarians. We're always attacked because we're um we're putting the resources out there. We want people to know. Okay, you don't have to you don't have to settle being lied to. You have yeah. a voice. Um, use that voice, and of course we're gonna get attacked. So anybody that's saying, if we were talking about the BS of life, oh we. You would get all these likes, but when you start calling stuff out, and I'm going to call stuff out because I'm a proud African-American gay man, and I'm letting everybody know now I'm gay. 
I'm 47 years old at this point. It's like, please, most of the people already reminded me of it since I was a little boy. So I'm just putting it out there. I'm going to make it plain. Yeah, I'm an African-American gay man. Came out in 96 to myself. I've always known since I was a little boy. But I'm just, le I'm just letting it out there now because, see, once you, you, you put the truth out to power, nobody can defeat you. You know, so it's it, it's it's like so I, we call we call stuff out, and um, I'm gonna always call stuff out as a black man. And I didn't come up with race. I tell the people I, this was be, before we were even thought of 1600s. I didn't do that. We're just byproducts of all that that nasty colonization, the slavery, the Jim Crow, all, all that stuff. We, you know, I didn't come up with race. Oh, but and it's funny, James, and how. <laughs> When you call stuff out, um, when it involves another white character, these are these are characters. Oh, um, oh, um, why you're racist? You ain't and see, I'm not gonna go back and forth with a racist person. I'm just not. That's just wasted time and energy because a lot of racist people are not going to change. And and I'm not on this earth to educate racist people. Hollywood want us to do that. You gotta educate these racist people. I'm not a magical Negro. I don't want to be. I'm not a token. I don't want to be. Um, I am black. I'm proud of the. I'm proud of my, the African roots, the native, the native indigenous roots that I do have, and I guess some some white roots. I don't know. I, I don't know which line they are on because African Americans, we have all of that that history. All of it is in our family lines, no matter what. And see the thing that, as you know, people are having a hard time with it. Why do you think all these politicians trying to eradicate libraries and these studies programs in these high schools, these schools and these colleges and universities? They know the history is they know the history is very funky. They don't want us to talk about this. And even with the soap opera stuff, um, a lot of these um white viewers, they don't want us saying a thing. They want it back to the days we were just the besties or the, the talk to the black male criminals, the stuffy middle-class lawyers and the doctors. They don't want to say anything. They don't want us to advocate for Portia. I advocate for Portia. Brooke Kerr? Brooke Kerr. I, I go back to with Brooke Kerr back to Passions when she was Whitney. Brooke Kerr, she's that. She, she's the Brooke Kerr. Yeah, yeah like, like mm -hmm. that was also her name. Then, yes. Uh, yes. Well, we're going to wrap it up because we've been on, we've been on almost two hours. I'm going to watch this. Uh, well, thanks for coming on to my show. You'll have to come back. We'll continue. The, the conversation's not over. we got the gates coming up at some point and other subs coming up. So we have to, that's a whole other discussion. Um, but I just want, I, I just a whole other discussion. But I just, want, yeah. I just want to say thank you for sharing your thoughts and, and sharing the history with, like I did with these with people. And I guess the, the end thing I want to say to the folks that are watching is that we see you, we're literally on your side in this and race does matter when it comes to soaps because it's still a majority. It's majority of it is white. Majority of the story is white. Um, it just is. Doesn't mean we can't like the soap still. We can still like them. There's a lot of characters I love on these soaps that are not black. We just want equity and equality for um, people of color Black folks, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, to have some major storylines, especially characters that we actually love, and um, it just want we just want to be normalized. That's all, just normalized. And uh, my side note is, where's my LGTV? I, I need more of that too. Not just the chicks. I need some dudes. Um, that's what we'll say there. Donald Peoples Jr. is on. Uh, you can find him on X Twitter, talking all that smack on there uh, daily. You can figure him out and see what he's doing over there. Um, and he is, and he is doing. He's doing a whole book on the history of soaps. And when that comes out, you'll, have, you'll be able to come back on the show, of course, for that. He's working. He's been working on that for years. He's going to get it all comprehensive down. And he is a librarian. So um, if you're if you're in New York, which library? Well, no, sorry, he's in your library. Yet. He's in a library in New York somewhere. I'll tell you all your business. You have you walk in, you see, <laughs> you walk in, just walk in. He's like, I think I know you. You can say hi to him. Um, and I'm James Hunt Jr. So I'm very aware. We're talking all kinds of stuff on this on this channel. Um, and we love soaps. I love soaps. I do. I love the genre. I want it to continue. It's as American as apple pie. Um, but I just want equality and equity. That's all I want. And we'll see you next time.